Right, just up here for a wander through the woods and uh, show you some kit. Everything's in there, I'll bring you back in a bit. Right guys, back down in the woods. Have a wander. Have a look at a couple of setups that I've got. And, uh, normal we'll see. <laughs> Wade through the mud. But, uh, yeah. Nice little sight. It's only about five minutes away from my house, if I'm honest. Well, perhaps a bit longer than that. But, uh, I'll bring you back in a minute when there's something better to look at than mud and trees. Cheers. Right, okay. In that dry bag there is all my hammock kit. All in one tarp the lot. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get it out and show you how I set it up and why I set it up that way. Cheers. Right. So, first out of the bag is my webbing strap. This is just uh, climbing webbing, about one pound fifty a metre and uh, I put it on both ends of my hammock and uh, I'll show you how I set that up. Tap. Right then, so there's the uh, webbing strap around the tree and then that feeds down into a steel carabiner. No need to have a steel carabiner. Climbing one will do and they're a lot lighter. It's just these are a lot cheaper. And then as you can see, it's in me, uh, I think they're called snake skins, and it droops all the way down there. And then at this end, because the trees are so far apart, I've used two climbing slings just to give me enough to reach the trees. But as you can see, that's far too low and I'll be on the floor within minutes. So what I'll do is I'll show you the reason why I use this setup. Right then, so there's a hammock set up between the trees. But as you can see, it's far too loose. So what the knots allow me to do, as you can see, what I've got is every foot, there's an overhand knot. And what the knots allow me to do is move this, and I'll just put you on the tripod, I'll bring you back in a second. So what the knots allow me to do is unhook that, and then I can pull this up to the nearest knot, and I'll just have to bring the camera up a little bit. So there you go. And it allows me to tighten up the hammock in that way. But what I can also do is, all right, is feed this loose end through the webbing like that, and then pull that. Not to get in the way a bit, but then that allows me to pull it even tighter. I'll run that through again because the camera wasn't quite where it should be. Yeah, so what I've done is I've thread the webbing strap through the loop here and it gives me a pulley to pull that nice and tight. Undo that. Push that into there. Undo that up. And then if you compare that what it was before nice and swing still but it's still it's no nowhere near as low as it was so what I'll do is I'll uh, just alter the camera angle there we go and the snake skins themselves we've got a little quick release on there and all I do is pull that up so these stay on permanently. Now in here, what I've got is my top and the hammock itself. So I just set that up so you can see what's going on. And I'll bring you down the other end and uh, walk you through the same procedure 
this end. Sorry for the camera work. So, uh, bit awkward doing it on your own, but uh, there we go. Second snake skin we'll cover, and you'll see that as I pull this down, it's fairly quick way of deploying it. And obviously where it comes into its own is when it's raining. Put it out the bag, especially with a bit of practice. I must admit I haven't had this out for a long time, well, a few months anyway. And then what I've got there is all my, all my kit ready to go. First thing that goes up then is the guide line. And I'll bring you back in a second and show you that. So here's, here's my guide line, all ready to go. That's just gonna go up around the tree. And uh, I'll bring you back when I've tied that up. So there we go. That's loosely tried, tied around the tree. And then what I do is, I use the old favourite, the prostate knot here, and that slides up there and holds the top nice and tight. So what I do is I peg out the top, each side now, and that will allow you to see it in all its glory. Cheers. Right guys, so what I use is pegs. These are from uh, British Army IPK individual protection kit. Um, you get most surplus stores, probably about five or you get, I think it's eight or 10 of these pegs. And then all I do is I put some split rings through the end. And then that allows me to be able to use those to peg out. So uh, I have, I leave on the end here, the uh, shot cord and a bit awkward to do one-handed. Give me a second. And then all I do is I'll either push that into the ground like that. Put the boot on it. Or as you can see there, use a tree or something else. Somebody carefully <laughs> left me behind. But it's basically use whatever the wood offers me. And again, this shot cord, to be honest, is far too thick for what it's needed for. You could use paracord. I just like the ability to trip over it and it doesn't knock everything down. But I'll get this set up and then I'll bring you back. Right, so there's me set up. As you can see, what I need to do really is put the tarp up higher, move the ridge line. But when I'm in that uh, hammock, believe me, all 16 stone of me brings it down a little bit and uh, that's job done. The sides of the tarp, because of how low they are, let the water run off and also keep the wind out to a certain extent. I can obviously pull them down even more if I need to. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, my tarp set up and uh, I think it's uh, time for me to put a brew on now and uh, start packing this up because I'm going to go right into the middle of the woods and uh, hopefully photograph some uh, some wildlife. I know there's some deer up here. I've seen them a couple of times, but I've always never had my camera. So, uh, happy days. If I see anything worth looking at on the way back, I'll show you. But uh, all this is up for sale. And rumour has it, I've just seen the people who live local and they tell me that it's sold, which is a shame. Hopefully it'll stay open to the public. 
Speak to you soon. Cheers. Right guys, before I go and before the battery dies, what you've got to do is, to put this away, is actually feed this up inside the snake skin. You're putting it along and feeding it up inside. And what you don't want is a great big lump. You're actually feeding and pushing this up inside it. And then what you do is, with all the, the ropes and stuff like that, just stuff them up there and then they fall out naturally at the end of it. So uh, I think the snake skins are worth buying um, for a big tarp like this. Definitely worth having two. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just carry on with this and I'll bring you back once it's all in its house. So that's one half of the tarp done. And I'll just do the same the other end here. Obviously it's uh, I'm doing it back to front but all you do is ram all this up into the snakeskin itself. 